Although in cyclocross he's still riding a bike, there are some real key differences than riding on the road. One of which, it's a far more physical effort just to maintain forward motion. So Simon, what are the best ways to prepare for a cyclocross race, training wise? Well first, let's say we break it down. What actually do you need to do to race cross? So depending on what age category you are, it's going to be up to an hour of riding. And if you looked at your heart rate across that hour, it's going to be pretty much threshold the whole way along. But rather than a steady state, you're going to be doing really loads of repeated peak power efforts, but with limited recovery between them, because as you said, it's actually hard just to keep the bike moving. So you might think it's a bit like a crit, but I don't think it is. The actual physical act of keeping the bike moving forward means that it's more demanding than a crit as well. Right, um, yeah, I think I should, I th I've I think I've got a meeting, actually, what? so, yeah. It's we plan a season game, Matt. No, no, I, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Matt. Still needs to practice his dismount. <laughs> I think he's in there. Matt, you okay, mate? Sorry, I've never been a big fan of intervals, mate. You know what I'm like. Come on, Matt, you'll be fine. Former British national road race champ. Let's talk endurance, Matt. The good news is you don't really need to have a huge endurance base for cyclocross. If you've just come off a summer of road racing or summer of mountain bike racing, then you should be absolutely fine to not really think about doing long endurance rides. And for someone like yourself who's got years of big miles in your legs, how many years? A lot of years. Sorry. A lot of years. Then again, you're not really going to concentrate on it too much. So you probably don't need to ride for anything longer than two hours at one time in a week. So it's the sort of training that would easily fit around somebody studying or who's got a full-time job or even us GCN presenters. Even us who work so blooming hard that we've hardly got any time. Very hard indeed. Hang out in the woods. Exactly. So it's more about tolerance to lactate threshold basically, building up your threshold session. So intervals are the way to go. Interval training is absolutely key. What are the best sessions for cyclocross? Well there are three sessions that I really used to like to do. So number one is one minute standing starts. To introduce a really specific cross technique, try doing this with your foot on the floor to start off with so that you practice your race starts too. Six of these in a session with full recovery in between are great for developing peak anaerobic power and muscle recruitment. Number two is a lactate threshold session. So you still, you don't want to drop the endurance work totally. So you do two 20 minute blocks at your lactate threshold with 10 minutes off in between. It's a good, short, compact session to okay. fit in during the week. And finally, some micro efforts. So cross is all about short bursts. Yeah. So a session of 20 seconds power on with 10 seconds off, repeated for five minutes, works really well. Try and do about three of these in a session. So Tom, where you actually do the training and the intervals is absolutely key. I mean, I've been uh, doing cross now for a couple of weeks and I've noticed that the effort or the pedaling style you use on, on the road, where it's quite smooth, high cadence, is completely different than, than riding cross. You, you're using a lower cadence, putting a lot more force through the pedal. So I guess, well, turbo sessions are ideal. Using hill, hill reps is great as well, of course, with uh, complemented by riding off-road. Yeah, but the thing is, you've still got your fitness from the road and you're not going to lose that immediately. So a couple of off-road sessions, a couple of turbo sessions, and once you're used to pushing bigger gears, that fitness is going to translate right over to cyclocross. So it's all about short seated efforts, short, short bursts of effort with short recoveries, but remember to sort of balance it with some good tempo stuff too. Yeah, and some technical skills too. <laughs> Many cross courses only have a short stretch of running, but there are always a couple of days every season where the race is so muddy that it's defined by the running sections. So you need to be comfortable enough on your feet that when you hop back on your bike, your legs aren't totally shot. Slow, steady runs are fine, but they're just not very specific to cross because running with a bike on your back in stiff-soled cycling shoes is totally different to going for a jog in a pair of comfortable running trainers. A great way to get around this is to go for a few slow steady jogs to build up your resistance to running at first and then incorporate a hard running session into your technique session. Try going on a short loop with maybe a 50 to 100 meter bank, sprint up the bank, hop back on at the top and prolong your effort on the bike so that you're used to going again after a run. Now, as Matt and last year have just said, practicing your technique is also really, really important. You can be the strongest rider in the world, but if you're losing two or three seconds on every corner, that's going to add up over the course of a race. So 
try at least once per week to ride your bike off-road. If you're racing at the weekends, then doing it midweek is really important because it is more demanding than just a normal interval session. Now, if you've got the space and the luxury of it, then a two-hour cross-loop is great fun. Or, if you're pushed for space, then just doing like a short technical circuit which combines cornering and running, dismounting, that kind of stuff. Then, that'll just keep polishing those skills so that all the intervals and all the hard work you're doing is going to pay off in the race as you're not hemorrhaging time. For more GCN cyclocross videos, click on me!